job right now is to find our subjects and to find our verbs. Right here, a preference for the interests of the many to the interests of the few. Laurels and statues of vain. Vain means conceited. When I'm looking at this first paragraph, I'm going to notice something. I'm going to notice that it's going to be 17 lines that will only have two sentences. No, three sentences, I'm wrong. So this is sentence number one, this is sentence number two, and this is sentence number three. These three sentences, especially the middle one, is quite lengthy. It has plenty of punctuation, semicolons, it has um, a lot of uh, quotes from what I'm assuming. So I'm going to prepare myself to have three independent ideas from this very first sentence. And whenever I'm thinking about an independent idea, I think about $100 ideas. One idea, one independent clause, I see, to me that's a $100 idea. So from this paragraph, I'm gonna expect, expect three $100 ideas. In continental Europe of late years, the words patriotism and patriot have been used in more enlarged sense than it is usual here to attribute to them or then it is attached to them in Great Britain. What I'm noticing about this sentence is that this is not an independent clause. This, this is more than just one independent clause and that there is a lot of pronouns. So let's break it down. Let's see what it actually is saying. In continental Europe of late years, all of this is going to be a prepositional phrase, so we're not even going to pay attention to it. Our job right now is to find our subjects and to find our verbs. So we're looking to find the actor and the action of the sentence. The actor is going to be the word, the words, the words patriotism and patriot have been used, have been used is going to be our verb. So the words have been used in a more enlarged sense. Enlarged sense means they have been used more uh, openly. Now, then it is used here to attribute to them. Then, so that means there's a comparison. Then it is usual here to attribute to them. What do you think them refers back to? Them maps back to words patriotism and patriot. Or then is attached to them in Great Britain. So when I'm looking at this sentence, I'm noticing that there's going to be more than $100 idea in here. And the first one is that words patriotism and patriot have been used in a more enlarged sense. And then, then it is used to attribute to them in Great Britain. And then them would be mapping to words patriot and patriotism. That is idea number one. Second idea, since the political struggles of France, Italy, Spain, and Greece, all of this is a opening phrase, we don't care about it as much, the word patriotism, that would be our subject, that would be our actor, has been employed, well, they don't necessarily mean employed like a job, but like used, throughout continental Europe to express a love of public good. So the word patriotism has been employed throughout continental Europe, that's a comma sandwich, so we are going to disregard this, to express a love for the public good. A preference of the interests of the many to those of the few. Do you see, this is a uh, semicolon right here, which means we're adding another independent idea. So the word patriotism has been employed to express love of the public good. The word patriotism has been employed to express a preference for interests of the many to those of the few. Another pronoun here, those. Those maps back to interests interests of the many to interests of the few. A desire for emancipation of the human race. Emancipation is a vocabulary word that is any type of uh, freeing from oppression. Emancipation of the human race. Semicolon again, that means it's another separate idea and an interest felt in the human race in general rather than that another pronoun, 
felt for any country or inhabitants of any country in particular? Answer me this. What does this word that map to? Interests felt in the human race in general rather than interest felt for any country or rather than patriotism felt for any country. The word that here, I think, maps to patriotism. So this long sentence has four different ideas. The word patriotism has been employed to express the love of public good. It has been employed to express the preference for the, for the freeing of the human race. It has been employed to express an interest felt in the human race in general, rather than um, maybe interest felt for any country or inhabitants of uh, a country in particular. So all of these ideas could be compressed to these two sentences together. You can say that the word patriot and patriotism has been used in a large sense, different from the way it's usually used in Britain, and it has been used to express all of these things. Last sentence in this paragraph, and patriot, in a like manner, is employed to signify a lover of human liberty and human improvement, rather than a mere lover of the country in which he lives or the tribe to which he belongs. The last sentence is using rather than, so there's a comparison, and what's the subject? Patriot, what's the verb, is employed, is employed to signify. What is it employed to signify? A lover of human liberty rather than a mere lover of the country. So this is your first paragraph. I know it's a handful, but this is exactly how you derive meaning from text and you can do this fairly quickly. Let's immediately answer question 28 that asks us about the lines 1 through 17 and what is it that they emphasize. They emphasize the qualities of, and I like to start at D, competition and fairness. Has there been any type of competition and fairness in here? Nope. Expansion and conquest, not at all. Nationalism and elitism. This answer choice is very tricky because if you're reading something about patriotism and it says patriot, patriotism so many times, a lot of students without reading and taking the time to comprehend this, they are going to immediately assume that it's going to be nationalism and elitism. This is absolutely the opposite of what this passage is saying. This passage is actually saying that the new enlarged sense of the word patriotism has been about inclusion. It has been about the love of human race in general rather than interest for any country or inhabitants of a country in particular. So it is going to be the opposite of nationalism and el elitism. We usually call this answer trap as true in the real world, not supported by the passage. In this way, you're going to be left with A. And even if you don't know what populism is, you're definitely going to sense that this is all about inclusion. But populism is a political um, movement where it is um, serving to the views of the common people, to the views of the majority. And I think somewhere I saw, to signify a lover of human liberty and human movement, there was something about emancipation of the human race. Oh, right here. A preference for the interests of the many to the interests of the few. That is the definition of populism. So definitely the right answer here would be A. Okay, paragraph two. Before I dive into reading paragraph two, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to preview how many hundred ideas, hundred dollar ideas should I be expecting. And I'm seeing there's a... a, a period and space here, so that's sentence one. There is a period and space here, so that's sentence two. So all together, again, three sentences. I'm expecting $300 ideas, but let's see. When in, not when, used in this sense, patriotism is a virtue and a patriot is a, a patriot, a virtuous man. So when used in this sense, this is again, that's a pronoun. And this sense, they are talking about this enlarged sense. When used in this enlarged sense, patriotism is a virtue and a patriot and a, is a virtuous man. That's idea number one. 
With such an interpretation, Patriot is a useful member of society capable of enlarging all minds and bettering all hearts with human fame with, with which he comes into contact. Semicolon means another sentence. A useful member of the human family capable of establishing fundamental principles of emerging his own interests, those of his associates, and those of his nation in the interests of the human race. So here they're describing what it means to be a patriot in the new sense. That he's a useful member of the society and he is capable of bettering society and establishing fundamental principles. Sounds good. Next sentence. Um, laurels and statues are vain. You may not know what laurels and statues are, but that's okay. Laurels and statues are vain things and mischievous as they're childish. Semicolon means another idea. But could we imagine them of use? Them? What is he mapping to? Them means laurels and statues. On such a patriot alone, could they be with any reason bestowed? Bestowed means given. Laurels are, it's kind of like a... Um, a uh, shrub and they used to make um, like decorations for the head with it whenever they want to honor someone so these are laurels and he says that in the new sense of the patriot those would be just useless laurels and statues of vain vain means conceited uh, and mischievous as they're childish so giving someone a statue or giving someone a laurel wouldn't be really appropriate for a patriot in the new sense. We don't really have questions about this part, but I'm sure somewhere we'll be asked about this. Next paragraph. Next paragraph consists of one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a lot of sentences, so let's be careful. If such a patriotism as we have last considered should seem likely to obtain in any country, it should be certainly in this. Pay attention. There's a lot of pronouns that are being used here. If such a patriotism as we have last considered, they have last considered the enlarged sense of a patriot. Would seem to obtain in any country, it means this type of patriotism, should be certainly in this. And we gotta figure out whether this guy is British or American. And he is in Indiana, so that means what, when he says in this, he's pointing to the U.S. In this, which is truly the home of all nations, and in the veins of whose citizens flows the blood of every people on the globe. So he's definitely referring to the U.S. Patriotism, in the exclusive meaning, is surely not made for America. So right here without really um, giving us a however or a but, he is reversing his narrative. Patriotism, subject, is surely not made for America in the exclusive meaning. So remember where it said that the meaning was being enlarged, but in its exclusive meaning, what they mean by exclusive meaning is that um, you are a mere lover of the country in which you live, this type of exclusive meaning of patriotism is surely not made for America. Mischievous everywhere. It were here both mischievous and absurd. He's referring to the exclusive meaning of the patriotism. The very origin of people is opposed to it. The institutions in their principle militate against it. To militate means to fight against it. So here we're mentioning two types of patriotism, the enlarged sense and the exclusive sense. The enlarged sense, it's, uh, we're told that if it were to, if, uh, if it should seem likely to obtain in any country, it should be certainly in this, in America. And patriotism in its exclusive meaning is truly not made for America. All right, I think we're ready to answer some questions. Question 29, that's a V-I-C, vocabulary and context. Question 31 says, obtain most nearly means, we're going back to the word obtain. If such a patriotism, as we have last considered, should seem likely to, in any country, it should certainly be in this. Should be likely to begin planning, gain, become established, or acquire. 
And if such patriotism, as we last considered, should seem likely to, it should certainly be in this. It is not begin planning because patriotism cannot begin planning. Gain is also not good because we, we can't say that the patriotism is gain, is likely to gain. Um, we're, we can't acquire patriotism, so therefore it is become established. The only reason become established works is because when you plug it back into the sentence, the only phrase that works is to become established. It's the old meaning of the word to obtain. You don't need to know this. You can just figure it out by plugging it back into the sentence.